So I've just jumped back onto this job again because I've been doing something else for the last few days. And what I want to tell you is we, we've obviously filled this in now and it's nice and uh, level by using our flat sander. Um, what I've done now is I've, I've changed it to an 80 paper and I've profiled this round corner here so all this is nice and flat. Um, I've just gone over the top, I'm quite happy with it. And then, blended all the sides in, you know, trying to get rid of some large scratches. It doesn't really matter, but, you know, if there's any raised pieces of body filler on the side, now is the time to just go around them and knock them off. And over the top, very light, very light with the 240 paper. You don't have to go berserk. Blow it up. And what we're going to do now, we're going to give it a going over with a microfiber without the raccoon. Get the dust off. See the dust? That's not very good. And uh, we're going to mix it. We're going to mix some uh, polyester spraying filler, high build print spraying filler, which is like a, a how would you say a liquid body filler, and it'll be uh, it'll make a nice base and it'll grip really tight to the aluminium and the body filler and uh, then we can sand it down with the 240 paper get it nice and smooth and level that's the most important thing so we're finished with our block sander now so let me go and get some paint ready and uh, we'll just apply it I've got the polyester spraying filler in a small touch-up gun this is the best as in my opinion is a high volume low pressure gun these are relatively cheap off Amazon or eBay or whatever you want to pay stainless steel top not a plastic one uh, downside is you can't get parts from them it seems to be uh, throw them away but this has lasted me many years when I've uh, kept washing it out um, yeah you've got to keep them clean and you've also got to make sure that sometimes this little nut under here works its way loose and then you get a crappy finish. Now this is a, a gravity fed gun a lot better than a suction gun because a suction gun you can never sort of get those last bits out of your gun and I often thought that um, a gravity fed gun was going to be really awkward to hold and it isn't really it's sort of balanced out um, so I was converted so we have given this a um, a sand down, we're going to give it a final going over with a microfiber. I'm going to slip my mask on and we're going to build it up. And I'll show you how we do it without doing a lot of masking because it doesn't really matter. Maybe it does on your case, but for me, it doesn't matter. If you, on your first bit of paint, you see I sprayed onto the cardboard. The reason for that was to clear any thinners, because I always leave a bit of thinners in the gun, so just to make sure that that doesn't go on your paintwork.
Now it may look like I put a lot of stuff on there, but this gun was only three quarters full. I don't fill it full because the paint will tip out the top, <laughs> which you don't want. Now I don't know if you can see the reflection in the light, but it's not too bad. Now it's a good idea with the polyester is if you see any, you'll see some pinholes and stuff like this in your filler. Just hold it down and give it a good blast and try and blast some uh, polyester into those uh, pinholes. And same with the scratches and things like this because this is only the first coat. You're going to leave it now 24 hours and then we're going to sand it down. And I think it's going to look alright because I'm looking all the time at the reflection of the light in the, from the roof. And I think it's going to be alright. So let's let that dry and we'll come back to it. Once you've got your first or second coat of Evercoat on, I just put one coat on, thick, went to do another job and then put the residual on the top of here. Just keep building it up. And what you'll find out is you'll think, oh my god it looks horrible. And because you can see all the little shrinks and waves where it's dried first into the old polyester, into the old um, body filler, and wherever there's metal it might be stood a little bit high. Don't worry, we were not worried about that at the moment. What we're concerned is, is getting it on thick. So I might just come back later and put another two coats of this on and let it really dry hard. Because you see this stuff dries like, tal it uh, sands like talcum powder. So it's really easy to sand, but it's, it's easier to put more on than less. If you see what I mean, because even though it might dry quicker, well, it doesn't really because it's a catalyst, so it uh, it dries the same. Now, talking about catalyst, while I'm rambling on, soon as you've finished, wash your gun out. All right, don't leave it and go for a pint and think, oh well, I'll come back and do it later, because it'll be just a big solid piece of polyester. It, you can't really get it out with paint stripper. It's not like paint, it's, uh, it's a different thing. It doesn't come out, so rinse it well with gun wash and like take it to bits, rinse it with a paint brush and, or, or one, that squeegee thing that I told you about. Get it clean, because you've got to do it at some time. Do it when the paint's wet, it's easy. Now I just give this a quick dust over with a piece of 240 and old to, just to see how dry this was. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use what's called a product called Guide Coat. And you spray it on. Just ever so lightly and then you leave it dry. Now I must admit I cheated a little bit because I wanted to see if this ever coat was dry. But I could see there was a high spot here and a high spot here. So when we leave this to dry, we should see something happen later on. So last night I gave this a quick uh, coat in a guide coat on the top and allowed it to dry. And uh, hopefully, well, look at all the, yeah, you see, look, it's, it's like a dust type stuff. So we're just going to. Sand over the top ever so lightly, and you can see why they call it guide coat. You can see now the high spots here, that was our filler, remember? So, what we're going to try and do is just gradually sand all that lot down, just nice, long, even strokes. And I'm just going to go and get my blow gun and blow this off. Now after a quick blowing off, and blow your paper off too. We can now start to see more clearly where we are high and low. And believe me, it's, it's tenths of a thousandth of an inch. <clears throat> but that will make a big difference on the reflection of your paint finish. And remember, we, we went over it with a, um, 
an 80 grit on a on a block yet we're still here <coughs> so some of it some of the fill has shrunk some of it's stayed up so we're going to keep on just sanding that ever so lightly And your paper will fill. I wear a dust mask. I'm not wearing a mask at the moment because I need to talk to you and I can't talk to you with a mask on. And remember, this is only 240 paper, nothing, nothing more severe. And notice we're not doing it with a orbital sander. We're just doing it by hand. And you can see how the the polyester ever just is ever so fine. And it's filled in all the little scratches and bits and pieces. Now I see up here we're starting to touch metal. So we're probably going to have to put a second coat on. No big deal. And this is, I'm doing this real time, it seems a bit boring. It's a bit boring to watch. But again, it's quite uh, it's not too it's not too bad. I mean you can do the job relatively quickly. And I'm gonna say something stupid now, because you can do a job quickly, but it takes time. It takes time for products to dry. And, uh, but it's worth it in the end. Because look at that, that's all come out now. We only, we're just starting to get a little bit low. I'm going to have to open the door in a minute. That's beautiful. That's a bit low there. Bit of a high spot there bit low there and a bit low here so we're a bit high on this these points here so the idea is not to go uh, knock that in because then we'll have to start filling again what we're going to do <coughs> is just build this up with a little bit of evercoat again another coat and then we're going to uh, leave it to dry do it again again it's a fast process but it takes time So this is a couple of days after the last few scenes. Uh, just to speed time along a little bit, what I did was I give it a coat of epoxy primer on top of the Evercoat that we were, which was nice and flat, and then I put a coat of what I thought to be Coniston Green, which it obviously isn't, on top of the primer. I didn't rub the primer down because you're going to make more work for yourself, and this is the reason why. We're going to use a, just a light coat of uh, top coat as a guide coat, just like we did uh, using the guide coat on the top on the um, polyester filler. We put primer on, epoxy primer on, and then um, 
a two pack paint on top of that now what we're going to do is sand that down and you think wow that's an awful lot of work mate but the thing is you can see it's nice and shiny already and that's just straight out the gun and it's dusty in here so we weren't too bothered about that but you will see that there's some uh, high spots still remaining because the Evercoat is very soft and you can still put little bores and waves into it so what we're going to do is we're going to rub it down with some 800 paper and keep it wet so I'm just going to do a little bit just to show you what to do and then it'll be ready for top coat because you won't need much paint you just need a quick flash over the top and it's done but I, I, I'm almost sure that we'll see some uh, more uh, high spots in this I know it sounds a long winded way to do it but you know it's a nice way of doing it the thing is with Land Rovers is everything sort of seems to be warped and, and bent so but if you're going to use this technique on your car that's not a Land Rover you know might have a Range Rover that's not so warped you can use this technique the idea is you've got to keep the panel wet so again I use my uh, dollar store uh, washing sprayer and the reason for that is rather than using a bucket if you're going to put your paper into a bucket there's a good chance you'll pick up some grit from somewhere and then you'll scratch all the surface so the idea is just to keep it constantly wet and keep that moving now again this panel here is only a demonstration panel it isn't you know, I'm not doing all the bonnet. But if we keep doing this for quite a while, we'll see some nice results. So I'm just going to pause it here and um, we'll come back. You can start to see now that we're cutting through the paint into the primer. The thing we don't want to do is cut through the primer onto the polyester. Now you've got to keep washing this down all the time because um, we use soapy water and that gives a little bit more lubrication when you're, when you're sanding rather than just using ordinary water. But I've been just sort of going, giving it big strokes like this, right? This is going to be the best looking bonnet on the let them land on and you can see and, and when you use a, a fresh piece of paper see I always wrap it around the block you're supposed to fasten it into the block but I never bother with that because papers don't last all that long and when you use a new piece of paper when it's wet it, it's really hard to push along because of the uh, action of the water making it stick but there, look at that, that's, that's what we were looking for, that, that high spot, you can see. And it's not because the paint wasn't even, the paint was even. Alright. Now we're starting to get thinner up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeegee this off. And now you can see exactly what I was on about. Let's see if we can use this. And just pull that excess water up. There. Now you should be able to see now, apart from the raccoon running around in the background, you can see now our little high spot here. It's just starting to get thin all over. So I'm really happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow it down and then I'm going to um, give it a last coat of paint. Now, when you're doing masking tape and you're doing wet flatting, now's a good time to take this tape off because masking tape doesn't like water. Now I've only kept that on there for spraying so I'm going to take that off now, wash it all down with the, with the hose and then when it's dry put masking back on again. It's a long process sometimes but uh, I think the result on that is going to be... Uh, really really good so let me let's see what it's like when it's dry and we'll give it a last coat so I'll give this a quick coat of paint again and 
look at look at the light reflection. I'm just going to walk backwards and try and keep that in focus. You see, it doesn't warp and distort. Oh, look there, we can get more lights in. Look, see, look at that. Now I'll tell you something. That's got that's got just a little bit of um, orange peel in that paint. But I tell you something. I may wait until I've got some till it's nice and dry, and put some fifteen hundred. Um, paper on that and run the polisher across it when it's dry I bet that's like a, gonna be like a mirror I mean you can look at the reflection of it now I, uh, it's pretty good that's not too bad I mean considering it's just Bondo but look at my reflection as I walk across alright this is a, just a cheap knocked up affair there's nothing fancy about it so I'm kind of pleased with that so I'm going to stop this now and then I'm going to come back to it when it's really hard and give it a flat and polish and I'll show you how to do flat and polishing.